to Would I Lie to You, the show all about lies and lying. On David Mitchell's team tonight, we have a judge from Strictly Come Dancing who's known as Mr Marmite. You either love him or hate him. <laughs> Plus, he's the colour of mahogany and smells of yeast. <laughs> it's Craig Revel Howard. <laughs> and a presenter who found himself at the South Pole suffering from frostbite and hypothermia. Two words, sat. Nav. <laughs> it's Ben Fogel! <laughs> and on Lee's team, uh, one of the stars of the sitcom Outnumbered, where he plays the father to those kids who are really cute in series one and two. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hugh Dennis! <laughs> and a woman I spent so many years waking up with that I find it hard to believe I never saw her on telly. It's Kate Silverton! <laughs> And so we start with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. Uh, Hugh is first. <clears throat> For superstitious reasons, I have to touch the tip of my nose whenever I say the word France. <laughs> David's team. Have you ever been to France? Yes, I have been to France. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing, but I have to do it. And I've done it since childhood. Well, spark that off. Well, because when uh, I was very little, I was quite scared. I was a very sort of worried child. And the thing that I was really worried about, more than anything else, was rabies. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckle, a little nervous chuckle after rabies there. I was terribly worried about rabies. <laughs> anyway, and you forget that England is this, it's an incredibly safe country where we don't have anything. But when you go to France, as it, oh. you. <laughs> I don't have to do it immediately. <laughs> is it all right, to, to, it all right to catch up at the end of the day? <laughs> When I was a child, because I was so scared of rabies, and we used to go to France quite often, uh, I thought that it would kind of ward off rabid dogs. It's one of those sort of weird childhood... How things. did you learn about rabies as a child, then? The hard way. Oh. <laughs> I've learned a lot about rabies, or as the French, and I don't, if I say French, I don't have to do it. If I say France, I do have to do it. But what the French call la rage, which is rabies, and I had just... I, th I genuinely thought it would ward off, it would give me good luck. Because right. I'm slightly superstitious, that's all. So, what do you think? Truth or lie? Well, it's possible, but unlikely. I do think the one time you said France and forgot to touch your nose... But that's because I'm an adult, and I don't... I, I don't think it's plausible at all, actually. It sounds absolutely ludicrous, and I can't imagine anybody wanting to do it. We're not going to ask you to mark him, by the way. We're not going to ask you to hold up a number. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, think, you think a lie? I think it's a lie. You're saying, you're saying it's a lie? We're saying it's a lie. OK, yeah, Hugh so. Dennis, were you telling the truth or telling a lie? I was telling... a lie. Yeah! yeah. Yes, it was a lie. Uh, Hugh does not have to touch the tip of his nose whenever he says the word France. Uh, ben Fogel, you're next. OK. OK. <laughs> uh, do I read it now, don't I? I ideally... Okay. <laughs> In an ideal world, you, you'd read it out loud. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was interrogated uh, for six hours on suspicion of being a spy. Hey. Wow, where? 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 <laughs> Sorry, it's the accent. Uh, can, you, can you interpret for me? Where? For the, for the postman in the corner. Where were you interrogated? Uh, so, it was uh, um, a, an island in the Pacific called Pitcairn. Called what? Pitcairn. And what were you doing there? Uh, basically, I was out there doing some research about remote communities, remote islands, and, uh, and I arrived and they thought I looked very dodgy and that I must be a spy. And just one extra twist to this is that uh, they also accused me of trying to illegally smuggle plants. What kind of plants? Uh, breadfruit plants. Breadfruit plants? <laughs> Are you just making up no. words? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Has anyone tried bread fruit? Horrid. It smells like old socks. It Horrid. tastes Horrid. neither like bread nor fruit. No. <laughs> I imagine anyone who's not heard of the breadfruit plants. Do we all know the breadfruit plants? I've heard of the breadfruit plants. I am the only one who's not heard of it. I'm like the Pitcairn Island as well. Great. Have you all heard of the breadfruit plant? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. What did they actually do to you? What's quite interesting is that, because there's only, I think there's 36 inhabitants on this island, they were very suspicious that I was there because no one had been on the island for about 18 months. You say they, they didn't know why you were there. I mean, don't these people watch Country File? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, 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 they didn't know telly. Didn't... So what actually happened then? What happened? So, uh, got interrogated for about six hours, got accused of not just being a spy but smuggling this uh, plant in. They found me guilty and I was deported and had a five-week journey back to Polynesia and then back to England. This was for a television programme, nope. was it? No, nope. I was just out there on my own. You're just researching into Yeah, researching, yeah, into researching for a book fruit. that I was going to write. So what do you think? Is he telling the truth? Well, I know that he did. I know that he did the journey because I've seen the book. I don't know whether he's using the story, which is a true story, and then adding, and then adding on the a bit interrogation. On. Like, if, you, if yours convinced. was, I read the news sometimes naked from the waist down, <laughs> it would be true that you read the news, right? <laughs> but you've, you've added a bit on, haven't you? <laughs> Taking yeah, a, a bit off. Hang on, <laughs> It's a, a semi true. It's a semi, yeah. yeah it's a semi, <laughs> definitely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, back to the interrogation. So the is it just me, or is there a bit of a frisson now yeah. between <laughs> Lee and Kate? I'm having yeah. a hot flash. <laughs> Imagine what Lee's having. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I think it probably is a bit of an add-on. Do you frisson. think it's not true? I don't think it's true. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that as well. You think yeah. it's not true as well? Mm. Go on, then. My team says not true. Say not true. OK, yeah. so, Ben, were you telling the truth, or were you telling a lie? I was telling... Truth. No. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Wow. I'm so sorry. Uh, it, it is. It is all true. Ben was suspected of being a spy, uh, with his love of the countryside, passion for cycling, and fascination with squirrels. He's like a real-life James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> right. Kate Silverton, you're next. All right. I once read an entire news bulletin with one foot in a bucket of iced water. David? Right. Um, I'm assuming some sort of injury. Yes. I had sprained my ankle. By, what, reading a difficult sentence? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had uh, I'd raced in a triathlon the day before. Right. And, um, and my, I'd come a bit of a cropper. Uh, so uh, the next day it was none too, it was very, very swollen. So we tried putting it up, but of course that didn't really look that good. Yeah, and the news, it would reading look bad, the news. Yeah. Looks too casual, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> we came up with a cunning plan to have a um, bucket of ice, but, but it, was, it well, was just, I was in such pain. It's very odd that you didn't have someone that could do it for you. I mean, you know, you're allowed to take sick leave, surely, on an injury. Why? why Not when you freelance. <laughs> no, because I went in. Obviously, I wanted to work. If I didn't work, then that's that's me. I don't get paid. So someone else um, gets in there. So, hey? Yeah. 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 No. Uh, bloody Hugh just... Edwards. <laughs> He'd have been in like a shot, wouldn't he? <laughs> Terrible news. Come Kate again. sprained her ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, an impression with the right accent for you. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I totally believe that. I don't. The freelance thing. What do you mean? What do you mean, freelance? Why can't you what be freelance? Mean? Oh, they're like a couple now. I mean, <laughs> are you that I'm serious? I'm just like a are you that, Shut up, I'll do with this. <laughs> <laughs> are you, were you that desperate for the money? Well, it was a three hour stint. It was on a Sunday morning, and you'd go in for three hours, and it's very, very difficult to get somebody else to cover. Uh, when did you do the injury, actually? On, on the Saturday. At what time? In the afternoon, like a three o'clock race. Oh, I see. And what part of the race was it? The running bit at the end. Where did you come in the race? Good Lord, it's like a slightly <laughs> camp inspector moose. <laughs> Please take your guess. Is she telling the truth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like well, to consult with your bit. team? <laughs> what do you think? I, I think it's probably true. What do you think? I think it's true. But yes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. So they're saying it's true. Kate Silverton, truth <laughs> or lie? It is a lie. Oh, 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 oh,
to lie. Kate did not read an entire news bulletin with one foot in a bucket of iced water. <laughs> to be fair, being a newsreader is uh, simply reading words from an auto cue. Any idiot can do that. Smile, pause for laughter, encourage applause. <laughs> nice stupid face at the end, I like that. Next round is the Ring of Truth, in which I read out an amazing celebrity fact, and all our teams have to do is decide whether it's true or not. So, both teams, take a look at this. Yeah, oh, you're a nice team, man. Most I of the rap is happening in London, now. but you don't have to be from London to do it, because it's important, from wherever you are, that you're doing it, because it makes the thing massive. <laughs> You sit in your armchair with your control for another channel. Would you sell your soul? Watch the box all day and night. Buy your own dish or satellite. Not me. You select TV. your subject you want to write about by just <laughs> watching the television or something. And if something is happening and it grabs your attention and you want to release the anger about that, then you just write it down in a rap. I just don't agree with Sky TV. OK, so here's the related fact for both teams. Andy Murray recently released a rap single that sold just 200 copies and failed to chart. Is that true? I, f I find that really hard. I mean, he's famously quite glum and dour, isn't he? Scottish. Scottish. Well, that does, I'm not saying that all Scots are glum and dour, but he is. The record was called uh, Autograph, and it sold just 200 copies, coming nowhere near the 1,000 sales required to make it into the charts, and it came out in November 2009. If he had any sense, he would have bought 1,000 copies himself. <laughs> so rigging results, then, Craig, is his fine in your book says Strictly Come Dancing Judge. <laughs> Do you know it? Do you know the rap, Rob? I've got, I've got some lines here. Here we go. During Wimbledon, it gets really crazy. My hand cramps up and my mind gets hazy. I sign and sign, but the line doesn't end. Wake me up tomorrow, let's do it again. Autograph. <laughs> My instinct is it's not true. I'm sure he's focusing on tennis. I exactly. Just, I, I, I don't think it's true. I, I think, think it's true. Oh. Do you? No. Uh, well, I don't think it's true, and so I'm um, the deciding vote. Uh, we're going to say it's a lie. So it's a lie. Okay. Uh, uh, Lee. Whilst you were talking before, Kate whispered something into my ear. Anyway, it's got nothing to do with this. But, uh, <laughs> but then I said, hold that thought until they've just... after they've Why said I... the piece. As a reporter, I think this is true because I seem to remember talking about it. It's quite handy having a newsreader on my side. Isn't it? <laughs> so there we are. So uh, Lee's team say it's true. David's team say that it's a lie. Well, this I will wish shock we you. hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> this I will regret that. <laughs> this will shock you as I tell you it's true. Oh, well done. Well done. did release a rap single that sold just 200 copies and failed to chart, and we've got it here. During Wimbledon, it really gets oh, crazy. My hand cramps up and my mind gets hazy. I sign and sign, but the line doesn't end. Wake me up tomorrow, let's do it again. Autograph. Autograph. Craig, you were laying down some fat beats there, my friend. <laughs> Darling. PhD, of course. Well, it's not my genre, but... No, that came across. <laughs> um, so, at the end of that round, <laughs> David's team have two points, but Lee's team have two points. <laughs> so, to our next round, this is my, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. And this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. And it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm as shocked as you. Um, you so... don't have to hear them, he's definitely with David. <laughs> Ben Fogel, what, what, what is Mike to you? Uh, this is Mike, and uh, I met him in a pub and got so drunk that Mike here gave me a tattoo. All right. Uh, <laughs> David, would you tell us how you know Mike? Uh, this is Mike, and we once started a detective agency <laughs> together. <laughs> in the, um... Really? <laughs> is that right? 
in my garden shed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, Craig. This is Mike, and he beat me in a moustache wearer of the year competition. <laughs> There we have it. Uh, Ben's <laughs> impromptu tattooist, uh, David's fellow private eye, or Craig's champion moustache wearer. Lee's team, where do you start? When did you have a moustache? Uh, during a show I did called Spend, 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 which was in uh, 1999. I was the choreographer. Why did you enter it? I entered it with my friend Clifford, actually. Was as... he an enormous dog? <laughs> <laughs> He had a moustache, I had a full beard, and I shaved my beard off. Where was it, the competition? In Finsbury Park. Just in the park? <laughs> was there any fencing? Not strictly speaking, the competition, just a lot of men with moustaches wandering around in the park. Yeah. Now, now I believe it. <laughs> if there were loads of men there, why did you suddenly make friends with the winner? Unless you fancied his moustache? Well, it was a long time ago, and it was a bit cute thing, weren't you, darling? <laughs> Do you, you want to just let's just give yeah. the world, darling? So, so let, let, let me, I'll do it for you. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, now. Now I'm thinking he can carry that off. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Like him, that <laughs> Were you hoping to get into an episode of Poirot? <laughs> no, we did it as a laugh. We were absolutely slaughtered one night. And we just thought we'd do it for a joke, really. Yeah. <laughs> David, so, David, just remind us again. Uh, we, yes, we set up a detective agency together in, in my garden shed. As children? Uh, yes, as children. How yeah. old were you at the time? I was, I think, ten. And he was the same age? No, he was uh, 13, I think. It's a bit of an age gap, I would have thought. <laughs> a 13 year old man with moustaches hanging around 10 year old boys. <laughs> did, you say, did you say 13 year old men? <laughs> They're men, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> What sort of cases were you taking on? I mean, what, what, what would be a typical case for you? Um, well, we... Uh, we followed a guy. <laughs> who, who was it you were following? It was a... a there was... A, bl a bloke who lived a few doors down. <laughs> he had a sports car. Oh, that sounds oh. nice, darling. I love it. Well, <laughs> you say that, I considered him suspicious. <laughs> what did you suspect him of? I don't know, it was, it was a sort of seedy car. And there were um, lots of uh, cigarette ends in the ashtray. Oh, guilty Hang as the bastard. sin. <laughs> <laughs> I had the time well, well, dressed like this. Yeah, was he as good at blending into the background as he is now? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Every time he looked round, he'd just be still, still going. <laughs> and, and what does he do now? I, I believe he works in IT. You believe? <laughs> Would you like to move on to Mr. Fogel? Yeah. Yes, Ben. Yeah. The idea of Ben with the tattoo just seems where, so is, where is the tattoo? Let's see it. Uh, no, I'm not going to show it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's on my shoulder. Why won't you show us? Oh, Look, I'm a bit embarrassed about it. I was really drunk. I, I, um... Embarrassed? What is it? Hmm? What is it? Well, I'm not entirely sure. It's either a star or a compass. Are you saying he's a shit tattooist? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, bu I bumped into him, got very, very drunk in a pub. In the middle of winter, no one else there except Mike here. And he, and, uh, and he had his tools with him. Uh, no, I think we we <laughs> left we left the pub and went somewhere, not entirely sure where. <laughs> You're telling me that you were so drunk with this man who you'd never met, who, God bless you, looks a bit eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "In my bag, I've got some needles and some ink. You've never met me. Do you want to come back to mine?" And you <laughs> said. Yes, that sounds my cup of tea. Let's go and do that. I'm off my face. <laughs> okay, we need an answer. Lee's team. Is Mike Ben's barroom tattooist, David's fellow detective, or Craig's moustache champion? What are you going to say? Uh, well, I think uh, it's Ben. Okay. Oh, I'd love it to be Craig. It's such a great story. I kind of think it's David, but it could be Ben. Sorry. Um... <laughs> I think it might be David, so we'll, we'll go with David. Same thing. OK, yeah. so, Mike, would you please reveal your true identity? My name is Mike, and one drunken night I oh. tattooed Ben. Oh. <laughs> I should just say, he is a very good tattoo artist. So let's have a look. Do you really want to see it? Yes, I really do.
Yeah. That's there a tattoo. Yeah. yeah. Is now, it a compass? What is it? It's Mike? a nautical star. All right, well, listen, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but also against the clock. We will start with... Uh, Lee. When I was six, I was thrown out of ballroom dancing lessons. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. Right. <clears throat> I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> Never say that to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were six. What, what, uh, what, did, what did you done in the ballroom dancing lessons? I, 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 I broke some. I broke a piece of equipment. What equipment can you break ballroom dancing? Um, I broke the machine that plays the music. The tape machine that plays the music. <laughs> what? Well, the machine that plays the music. Music from the robot, the friendly yeah. robot that ran the classes, <laughs> and would play the piano. I what, broke it. What dance were you doing at the time? I can't remember the dance. If the truth be known. So you can't do it now for us? You're absolutely right, Ben. OK. <laughs> so, Lee, you say you couldn't do it, and under okay. normal circumstances, but we've got a... We've got a... Oh, Craig! I oh, call him dancer. Okay. He can hold your hand and right. ease you into it gently. I'll show you how it went. OK. I'll show you how it went. Right. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this really slowly, so listen. <laughs> I think... Uh, I think I'd better lead. Now, um, <laughs> it's... It's arm up, like this, you see. And basically, the uh, arm on the shoulder, you're the lady. I sort of turned and then said, oh, what's that machine? And, uh, <laughs> and, then, and I broke the machine. That yeah. was a rough, roughly yeah. out of <laughs> so, I... If that's not evidence... <laughs> so what are you going to say? What's, what, what do you think? Truth or lie? I think it's an unusual choice, you know, for a six-year-old. For a six-year-old, six well. but it's obviously... It was a... big in the 70s, though, because of Come Dancing. Come Dancing was a big show in the 70s. Yep. Before it was bastardised. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? I, it's a difficult one, but I think we're saying it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. OK. Yeah. Uh, Lee, <clears throat> truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. Oh. Oh. It's true. Anyway, when Lee you know, was six, anyway. he was thrown out of ballroom dancing lessons. Even so, he spent the next few years locked away in his bedroom perfecting the hand drive. <laughs> David. <clears throat> I have such a terrible singing voice that one year my teacher told me to mime during our school carol concert. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the song? What was, what was the song? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was a, a range of, of Christmas carols. Oh, there was a few that you were bad at. You just you were bad, yeah. full stop. It wasn't just the yeah. one song. Oh no, no, I know you're right, Lee. I sang some of them like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh come all ye faithful, I just would scream the word shit. <laughs> so what did she did she say this in front of everybody? Um no. No, no, I was I was sort of taken aside and and said, look, you're finding this a bit difficult, aren't you? And it's it's put <laughs> It's, it's putting some of the other boys off. <laughs> so, truth or lie, time to decide. It's kind of too obvious and too easy, so I don't know. No, you're thinking of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. I think it could be just a lie. I will say lie, the team says lie, we'll, we'll lie. go with lie, yeah. OK, David, <laughs> truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> It's a lie. David was not told to mime during his school carol concert because he has such a terrible singing voice, sir. David's never been asked to keep quiet at school. <laughs> well, once. But uh, out of respect for the gym teacher's career, we won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <clears throat> oh, me. I always throw the first and last biscuit in a packet away without eating them. Why? Because the one at the top, it started when the one at the top is crumbly, so I used to throw that, often it's got crushed, and then I don't, can't explain why the bottom one is <laughs> the bottom one. 
Do you mean you throw the bottom one away before you start eating them, or just when you get to the bottom one, you throw it away? All right, here's the packet of biscuits, OK? <laughs> Take the top off with a little little bit of stringy kind of yeah. wrapping. Mm -hmm. Which actually it. reveals sort of two or three Two or biscuits. three come yeah. away in it in a quite yeah. a satisfying yeah. motion. Yeah. The yeah. third one is normally relatively unscathed yeah. by its experiences Which during transit. What are you talking about? I take those, let me talk. I take <laughs> them out. <laughs> Suddenly I'm on Bill Turnbull's side. Um, <laughs> I take them out. The top biscuit is often damaged. I discard it. I you then can take discard the... it. What, throw it away. Throw it away in the bin. In yes. the bin. Waste in it. Bin. Or leave it. All for the dog. I'll put it on the floor in, in the kitchen. Then at the bottom, because I'm taking them out to put them in the biscuit. Have you got a jar. dog? Yes, I have. <laughs> ben, he's not going to say no now. He's quite good at this. <laughs> I've got a black lamb. Oh, very good. Love you. So, <laughs> Where you do black experiments. <laughs> <laughs> And take the biscuits, I'm getting them out to put them into the, into the clear Perspex uh, Kellner jar, whatever it's called. If what? you're worried about biscuits getting crushed and misshapen and crumbly, why do you put them in a biscuit jar? Well, that's the that's safest place. Happens. No, it's not. A packet is like a, a car park for biscuits. It's, <laughs> it's all perfectly, isn't it? If you put them in a jar, you're going to oh, get exactly the kind of problem you're trying to avoid. You think I'm putting them in the jar like this. I give my wife the jar at one end of the room. <laughs> stand at the other end and go, are you ready? <laughs> That's not how I put no, them in here. You, you take them out one by one and carefully place them no, in the bottom no, of the jar no, David, like a maniac. No, David, I take them out <laughs> and I slide them into the, what, to the, to the jar and they rest happily. What biscuits are they? Uh, chocolate hobnobs or, ideally, the ones I don't have to do it with, because I only do it with the ones you take out, is the chocolate Leibniz, because they come in a, in a box. They're usually unscathed. You've just said that you give chocolate hobnobs to your dog. Chocolate is poisonous to dogs. <laughs> Have you not met his best dog? <laughs> well, now you mentioned he wasn't it a black actually. lab when we got him. <laughs> he was a golden retriever. So just to absolutely establish, you're taking out the biscuit, you're discarding it because it's crumbled. If it's not crumbled, you tend to throw it away, but not always. Then you'll slide them out like some sort of magician on your hand like that. You'll get the jar, you'll insert them in, unless it's a Leibniz, wherever the bloody hell they are. <laughs> they go in, it comes off. There's one left, it's not damaged. Give it to the dog that used to be brown that's now black. <laughs> that is what you're telling us is what's happening in your house. You're mental, of course it's true. <laughs> I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. You're going to say lie? Yeah. Uh, go on, then. I'll go with my team, say that's a lie. Yeah? Lie. David. Well, yes, I think I can believe it. Did... Yes, yeah, I don't I like the broken biscuits on the end. Yeah. So, so what are you saying? So one. we'll say true. You're true. saying true, right. Yeah. You say true, you say lie. Well, it's actually a lie. <laughs> That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have romped to victory by eight points to three. <laughs> but of course, it's not just a team game. Uh, my individual liar of the week is Ben Fogel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ben Fogel, who, who hasn't lied so much since he sat behind James Cracknell and said, I'm rowing just as hard as you are. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>